Hi again. In this part of the Razorback screencast, we're going to look at the armor of the vehicle. So the armor is interesting because it can't cover the sensors, but it still needs to protect the vital parts of the machine, like the engine, the drivetrain, that sort of stuff. Uh, even the front area here with the brakes. So it may actually be a good idea for us to start by armoring some of these areas. And, um, you know, I'm thinking a lot of these armor plates are still going to have to provide ventilation and access. So they may be angled, sort of like an armadillo's shell. So uh, let's let's try to start creating some of this. Now I'm warning you that this may be a sort of a throwaway video because um, even when I'm modeling real world bikes, the fairing um, sometimes needs to be remodeled and done a few times just because it can be tricky and you don't always get it right the first time. So uh, if we if we end up redoing this a few times, you know just bear with me so let's just pick something to, to try to armor first and let's just work from there so I'm thinking um, you know the has cams are pretty modular pretty out in the open they, they kind of need to be um, the sides of the engine maybe maybe we can armor put an armor plate right here right in front of that servo motor so that it just covers the actual motor housing part and it leaves it open at the back for ventilation and then we can maybe put an additional plate right behind that one so let's let's just try that and see how it looks so for this part I'm gonna use the uh, create polygon tool um, I don't actually remember what menu it's under but I know that it's it's uh, it's in the right click menu I think it's ME create polygon and this will allow us to sort of draw a strip of polygons so let's uh, start up here and let's say okay if this armor is going to be like a vertical plate coming down and sort of curving around so let's try to create that let's just start really simple and let's just bring it down in front and terminate right about there so I'm just going to go back up matching my point number and then I can click and I have a strip of polygons so I can now sort of select this polygon because it's really just one big end gone and bring it out to where we're working so we're working right here and we sort of want this strip to cover the motor from the side but we want the leading edge of the strip to go to the front of the motor so that means we can select the leading edge right here and put it in and then we can select the trailing edge right here and sort of move it outwards and flare it out a little bit and it looks it looks like it's pretty blunt right there so we need to maybe move this edge forward and this is going to be a really organic process there are no rules right now just what looks good and what works what doesn't work what doesn't look good those are pretty much the rules so I can sort of move these polygons around however I want, I want. And uh, now might be an okay time to convert these end gons to polygons. So we can sort of move them around a bit more freely. And we can sort of see that we're already intersecting some of our geometry. Um, we can sort of just start moving this stuff around very organically. Because we just need to sort of have it um, sort of weave into the stuff that we've already created and that already exists right there. So as I move points around here, we just want to be thinking about what the final form is going to look like. And uh, that's that's just going to have to develop as we go. I mean, I, I could try to do some sketches. I'm not great at sketching, so um, I'm not sure how those would come out. But I could certainly do some sketches after this video. And maybe it'll give us an idea of what we need to adjust and what we need to do differently. But, uh, you know, creating the fairing from this perspective is really just a lot of... Um, a lot of moving polygons and moving strips of polygons until you're happy with them and okay when you're happy with a strip of polygons you say okay that's 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 gonna be sort of set in stone let's leave that there and now let's move on to something else but uh, this this armor I've, I've never done armor before so this is kind of odd for me 
Um, I do know we want it to be protected from the front as well, so maybe we need an extra piece curving around the front of this motor. So what we can do is sort of position this so the motor doesn't intersect it very much. And then we can select, um, let's select these two edges and let's just click and drag, control click and drag to extrude and bring another piece of polygons out in front. And then we can wrap these around the front like that. And we're starting to see how our armor will form. Now in terms of style, I think that one of the things that will make this Razorback look really good is a very geometric utilitarian style. Sport bikes, um, at, at least sport bikes in the mid 90s and the, sorry, the late 90s and the mid 2000s, uh, they always had a very smooth facade, very smooth and sleek because that was just what a sport bike was supposed to look like. Now as we got into the um, late 90s and early 2000s with fighter jets, we saw that the surfaces became much more angular. If you look at a jet like the F-14 Tomcat or the F-18 Hornet and you sort of look at more modern jets like the F-22 Raptor or the F-117, well the F-117 Stealth Fighter is an older jet I guess but it has that angular structure and what I'm finding is that this angular structure may seem to look more modern. It, more look, it, it may look more more battle ready if you will. Oh, another great example is the Batmobile. The Batmobile in the uh, latest Batman movies, it, it, it looks like something the military produced. It looks like a stealth machine. And, uh, you know, these angular structures, these armor plates welded into place, very, um, very utilitarian. And that, that, that is sort of what we're moving towards in terms of style and trends. So maybe if we try to replicate a little bit of that with this armor, it'll work out nicely. Now we have another issue, is that we we want our armor to do its job, but we also want the audience to see the machine. And if we cover up everything that we've just done, well, it gets kind of boring. So it's interesting, it'll, it'll be good for us to have um, spaces in the armor like this, where you can actually see the machinery working, and you can understand that there's more going on back there, but you just can't see all of it, because some of it is covered up with the armor. Um, you know, that's that's... That's one of the things that I'm thinking about as I'm going through sort of massaging this geometry. And um, just, just to give you an idea of what I'm thinking, once we get these armor plates flowing the way we want, we can actually preserve this polygonal look by using the uh, bevel tool on the edges. So what we can do, it looks like my points up here are just kind of off. I don't know where I lost those. Okay, that looks pretty good. So what we can do is we can actually just select the structure as it is, select all the edges, and bevel all of them. And that actually gives you a extra series of geometry and it can, it can help you maintain that look if that's what you wanted. Uh, so for instance, if I were to apply a Fong tag to this, just like that and we say no angle limit so we have a very smooth piece of geometry now it's being interpolated and shaded for us but if we were to take this same piece of geometry and do this technique I just showed you maybe we didn't want these edges here to be included we can just do a bevel on all those edges and what we get is we get that same armor plated welded look but more smooth so it looks more intentional and that's something that we can play with as well uh, I think I use that technique quite a bit on my Aprilia RC8 model. That has sort of an angular stealth fighter look. So, you know, if this is the beginning of our armor plating, this looks pretty good. We can probably pull this piece in a little bit. And then maybe we can start to think about how it connects to the other side. Maybe this, uh, maybe this edge here comes right around the front and hooks onto the other side. Let's see how that looks. So what we need to do is create a symmetry object for the armor. So we just go symmetry and we put our polygon in there. We could probably group it just for good measure uh, because the symmetry object only allows you to have one object as its child. But if you make that a null object, you can put a series of other polygonal objects underneath it. 
So now that we have this and the symmetry is being replicated on the other side, we can actually um, go to the front view or the rear view and we can just control drag this edge over to the center and just to make sure it meets nice and flush we set its X size to 0 its X position to 0 and it meets perfectly so we have that sort of armor right there and it doesn't impede the steering wheels ability to the, the, the front wheel rather its ability to do its job and we can sort of start moving these points around and we're starting to see the the armor takes shape but we still don't really know what it's supposed to be so that's gonna evolve a little bit more as we move along um, you know this is very primitive and you know having no material to work from on this is starting to hurt me a little bit more than I thought it would it's always nice when you have somebody else's design to follow along with but in this case we do not all we have is a description from a book and the description never talks about the armor it just says that there is armor this is an armored vehicle it needs to be I mean it's putting itself in very dangerous situations so let's just leave that straight at the moment and we can sort of see the Razorbacks first layer of armor starting to form now let's pull it in at the base because it does look a little bit hefty so you can right click drag and it moves it towards it or away from the camera it's a nice little trick so we're just rotating this into place and I'm probably going to slide this edge down MO or slide there we go and so now we're sort of sliding the geometry into position moving it around so it makes a little bit more sense and for now we can just select this edge control drag it down and I'm going to select these two points and weld it to the former and now we can select this point and move it down like that so as we as we model this armor, you know, this very organic process, we want to be thinking about what the other pieces of the armor look like. You know, do they um do they interlock or do they um do they overlap? As I was mentioning earlier, I, th I think they should maybe overlap. And uh, you know, these some of these squares are becoming very non-planar and very funny looking. So you see, this this isn't actually a square anymore. It's like a diamond shape, and it has a weird it has a weird aspect to it so we're going to want to keep an eye on faces like that and we just sort of create our armor so if that's our first piece of armor it looks pretty bulky it looks like it's covering the motor well though um, you know we could then we could then create another piece of armor that comes down behind following this curve as sort of an example so let's let's see what that would look like so to get that piece of armor we just create another polygon strip coming down this way and meeting down at the bottom there so let's see what that would look like so just create another strip coming down one two three four let's leave it at four four three two one so we have that strip and it's created a new polygonal object for us and we can just move that out right there and to get our edges we can just select it and say remove end gons so now we have another strip of armor so if we put this strip of armor right here behind the motor it might give the viewer the impression that the armor is supposed to overlap and uh, that there that there should be gaps in the armor uh, maybe the armor is designed to, you know, protect against gunfire from the front. So that would be a good, um, a good example of, of of how it can it can have purpose. So I'm just going to start moving points around again, and 
and maybe we can flare the rare edge out a little bit. Now one interesting point about this bike is that a human doesn't need to ride it. I mean there is there is in fact one Razorback in the book that can be ridden by a human I believe. It's It's been specially modified for the villain to ride and uh, well, we're not building that. We're just building one of the foot soldier bikes. So here we can sort of see the armor taking shape. I'm going to use the knife tool and put another cut in the geometry and bring it out. It doesn't need to be as flared as the previous piece of armor was. Now. I'm not an expert on any of this, but I'm thinking that you'd want armor plating to be easily replaced. So we definitely want to make this modular so that we can we can imagine someone unbolting one damaged piece and replacing it with a fresh piece of armor. You know, that also adds to the autonomy and to the um the the unstoppable nature of these machines. That oh yeah, you uh you damaged my armor, that's okay. I'll just I'll just replace it next time I get to home base. I'll just have one of the humans bolt a new piece of armor onto me and I'll be I'll be as good as new. You won't even be able to tell it's me that you shot with that shotgun or whatever it is. So here we have another strip of armor and I mean as I said this this might be a throwaway part of the screencast. I'm I'm not sure how this is gonna work. I'm not I'm not sure if it'll I'm not sure if it'll look good. I'm not sure if it'll work. I just don't know. So I'm going to put that in the symmetry as well. And we're starting to see the armor take shape. I'm not sure it's a good thing, but we're seeing it. I think to give it some more of that angular look, I'm going to take this front piece of armor and I'm going to straighten out the base. So instead of having it curve, I just want it to be straight. Something like that. So this this takes what is what is otherwise a, a coincidentally organic shape and gives it some intention. Um, I'm hoping that at this point you can tell that well a viewer of the project will be able to tell that I I want I want this piece of armor to look straight down here by the base and I want it to look not straight up by the top. And when you when you make those deliberate tweaks to a fairing of a motorcycle or to the shape of armor, it can really help sell the idea that yes, this is supposed to look like this. It doesn't just happen to look smooth. It's supposed to look sharp. It's supposed to look angular. So right there, we can see that we've sort of added that intentional crease where the armor is intentionally changing direction, maybe to enhance its stealth or something something along those lines um, that's that's always a good place to be where, where you're sort of making design design decisions based on real world constraints and considerations um, that's that's when a design can really shine and as we're pitching the armor forward here I'm deciding to pitch the part that's buried behind the wheel backwards a little bit. Again, to create some of that deliberate tension between the surfaces. Um, okay, good. So what we have is we have this front piece of armor that's been sort of sculpted. You see how it looks really angular now? It looks more like a tank and less like a motorcycle. I like that. I like how that's playing. So, you know, I know I've been harping on this, but this 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 may just get deleted the next time I look at it. And I'm not I'm not sure. What I typically like to do is after I record one of these screencasts, I actually spend a few minutes rotating around the model and looking at it from different angles and sort of um, investigating what I've done in the last screencast. And sometimes I look at it and I say, you know what? maybe we should redo this the next time I do a screencast or maybe or maybe this is exactly what I wanted it to look like um, another another fun thing to do 
when modeling a fairing like this is to, is to look at it isolated. So look at it alone. Does it look good alone? Um, if it does, then there's a much better chance it'll look good with the rest of the project. So if I were to hide these objects right here and we look at just the armor by itself, yeah, it does. It does look kind of cool. And I, I can see right away what would make it look cooler. If I were to put a uh, put a cut right here and sort of bring it out so that it follows the angular shape of its of its other component, we can sort of see we can sort of see again some of that deliberate shape happening. And as we tweak this, we can sort of see how it becomes a member of the armor. For instance, this edge here is in line with this other edge, and from from the front slash rear view, it, it sort of lines up with the idea that it should peak at a certain point and then curve back towards the top of the machine. But when you look at it from the side, the same thing isn't conveyed. So without even looking at what the armor is covering up, I'm just going to try to make it look like it's meant to mimic this other piece of armor. So we can sort of bring the gap back a little bit so the gap looks more intentional. And as we bring the gap back, we realize there's pieces we need to bring forward. Or maybe this edge needs to slide more upwards so it looks like it continues with the armor. And we can sort of make it look like there's some thought behind it now. It's not just Jamie messing with it and moving points around. Um, it's actually supposed to look this way. That's that's the idea, you know? Uh, if you guys are hearing scratching noises, that's my dog. He's, he's walking around in the room here with me. Uh, so... So let's just move this around a little bit and we can sort of see the armor forming. Now this by itself is starting to look like a mask of some sort and that's good. It's going to help maybe personify the machine a little bit more. So if I unhide all of the other components we've been working on, we can see that this armor is starting to look okay. I, I, I kind of like how that looks. Um, you know, we have some intersection here, but that's that's something that we can deal with. We can take care of that. Um, maybe moving this edge up a little bit. Keeping its general direction. Maybe pull it out so it doesn't intersect. So, I don't want to make this video too long, because it is a bit of an experimental video, and I'm not even sure of what I'm modeling here. So, I think, uh, I think I'm going to cut this one short, and we're going to end it here. Uh, but I may keep tweaking this shape on my own, and the next time we do a video, I might have a more complete looking piece of armor here, or maybe not. Maybe if I think there's there's more to talk about, I'll I'll leave it so that so that we can look at it together. And uh, yeah, so until next time, see ya.